this time on Tech Tuesday, we're gonna install a power flip windshield on Travis's family ride, the four-seater X3. You can go to instructions.brp.com. There's your part number. And this will scroll through and tell you step by step. And I'll show you the way I do it. Um, they show right out of the gate, you know, you could go ahead and install your assembly or your frame around your windshield, your little top windshield piece. You can go ahead and put some things together and then it's bolted on the machine. This is kind of the basic of what you'll need to put it together. Uh, you will need some scissors and a silver marker, a white marker of some sort because at the very bottom, you do have to uh, print out a template and that template is for trimming the plastic uh, on the nose up near the windshield. That way the windshield can flip in and out. Your basic tools, you will need a drill, 13, 30 seconds drill bit. Uh, that's just to open out two holes to hold the windshield frame. Some channel locks, basic wrenches, you know, eight and 10, a couple of torques, 30, 25, 20 ratchets. You know, very, very simple. Not necessarily a Red Bull, but I like it. And then here's all your here's all your parts from the actual power flip. You got your main windshield, your little upper visor, which actually uses this piece and bolts to the back of the rearview mirror for support. Of course, a bunch of weather strip trim, zip ties, switch. It's electric, so uh, like my previous videos with the power flip on the Maverick Sport, this is very similar, uh, just on a different machine. Your braces and your anchors and such as that, your uh, drive motors, they're boxed left and right. So when you pull them out, I advise to uh, mark them left and right, part of your frame. What's really cool is your hardware comes in different bags. Uh, I would keep the hardware separate. That way, like this hardware kit is for the frame. This hardware kit is for the hinges and this hardware kit is for whatever else it is. You will also need a rivet gun. Uh, they like to throw some rivets in there. You got plugs for your wire harness. The reason you have plugs is the wire harness comes with no plugs on it. That way you can feed it through the roll cage. So don't put your plugs on until last. Uh, get your harness fed through the roll cage. You know where it goes. Once it gets out, possibly even put your plug wires on inside your plug as a test run and then once you know you have it correct mark them and then put your plugs together so that's the basic uh, rundown of it so first thing that i'm going to do for the install is luckily this roof is just these little turn screws a couple velcro strips pull it up so it's out of the way because the visor will land right about here there's a little turn screw area right there just to have that up out of the way ready uh, you're going to have to take your passenger seat out uh, if you don't know how to do it, well, you're going to learn now. Uh, I've got a little battery tender on there. Uh, right here in the front, you have two bolts, bolt and nut. They're 13s. Take these two out. They slide out inside. And then you have two 19 nuts back here behind the seat. Zip those up, take those out. If you have harnesses, the lower part of the harness stays with the seat, but the upper part is hooked to the cage, so you'll have to take it off right here. Whether you have the retractable harnesses or normal harnesses, um, just depends on what size bolts. If they're retractables, the bottoms are 19s, and that's all you do. This is a 19-16 combo. And then you're going to take your inner wall out. Let me pull the battery tender off. Um, your inner wall. sits in there just like that. As it reaches in the back here, pop it out. Only weird spot is this tucks under. Just keep pressure on it, this pops out. No big deal. Because you need to get to this. You need to get to your, uh, your power terminal because you will hook up ground and accessory power. And then you will go forward and you will mount your rocker switch Really, wherever you want it, you can mount it in this area. You can mount it right here. 
you have spare room, you can mount it over here. You know, wherever, wherever you see fit to mount it. But you have to get that out of the way first. And then this. And then we're pretty open to go ahead and start putting some stuff together. So you're gonna go through your instructions. And that little area right there, you gotta trim that out so the windshield will flip and clear. Go down to the very bottom of the instructions and there's templates. These are your templates. You'll cut these out with scissors and they'll lay on here just like this and the lines will follow the front edge, tape them together, make a line and you'll cut off, cut off right here. That way the windshield can flip in and out. So once you get your template cut out, have it laid on here. You're really just following this front edge. Lay it down in there where it goes, tape it, and then draw your line. And you've got your exact cut line on where you need to trim the plastic back. And there it is. So now we'll get to cut. So there's a couple ways you could cut this plastic. You use a Dremel tool type thing with a little cutoff wheel. You can use a razor knife and a razor knife and a new blade. Uh, just pass over it a few times and it'll eventually cut through. Or if you have a razor knife, if you'll heat it up with like a little torch, it'll melt and cut through really nice. Uh, I used a Dremel tool. So now that I got the piece cut off with the Dremel tool, it leaves it a little rough. You can take your razor knife or even like a little file and just drag along through there and just get the excess off. Clean her up really nice. The little visor mount, you'll take some of your weather strip and you'll stick it to your little visor mount here. It goes with this triangle mount. Triangle mount goes right there. You pull your pull your mirror bolt out. And put a longer one back in, then you do a bolt in your nut. It's this size little bolt, the little M6. And then you have these two little meat-eating washers. They go in from the side to hold this, and that's gonna hold your visor. Um, set it all up, you know, you can tighten these two, but put these in here loosely. That way when you set your visor on, uh, this can be adjusted. So when it comes to your upper visor, you have a little quarter turn screws here. This is the order they go together. Screw, washer, and through the window. This goes up. This is like a little locking ring that'll fit right in there. And the foam goes very last. So that's kind of a complete deal. So once you get your visor slid up in there, your little quarter turn screws, holding it down on both sides, use these little five millimeter with a flat washer and a locking nut to go in your center section, all three of them together. And move on to the windshield, the windshield frame. Uh, get a towel and lay your windshield down. All these pieces basically land together like this on the windshield itself. The frame goes here, these go to here, it works its way around and back and bolts up. Uh, you'll want to put a little bit of the foam weather strip tape on the back sides and then a couple pieces on the back sides all the way around to kind of give it a little foam barrier. Now these two holes right here, going these right here, these are the rivets. Um, I would put those in last, get everything, get everything halfway snugged and halfway lined up, possibly leave it a little loose. And then when you put it up there, you can get everything kind of lined up, snugged up and do the rivets very last. So when bolting this frame together, it's pretty simple. Uh, bolt goes through the tubing. Make sure you lay the tube on the windshield and put the elbow in the right angle. The elbow has a slight bend to it, so it's either going to bend up or bend 
down. So you need to set it on there and then make sure all your pieces are going in correctly. I got all the way around and the longest bolts I have are these. And I was like, what in the world? Went back and looked at the diagrams and stuff. So this is how they lay in. Bolt and washer on the back side. And that bolt is, that hole is hex shaped. So you take your little gold nuts and put them in backwards from what you would normally put them in. And they land just like that. That way the threads are going inward. So just a little, little side note secret. So we're sticking our foam around the edge of the frame, windshield side, that way it doesn't rub and rattle. All right, here's your little secret. It's hard to get the backing off this phone without ripping the glue. So take a sharp razor blade, pierce it, and make a rip in it. And then you can peel it off pretty easy. So we see we've got the frame all bolted together loosely with our foam on the back side, using all the shorter bolts for the frame area here and here. The little bit longer ones go here and here, and then there's the longer ones go here because this little little frame piece sets on there and the bushing goes in from the outside. This is what the pivot is for the, the whole windshield. So to push that bushing, uh, you can use channel lock pliers. Uh, you're gonna struggle with a little bit or you use a vise like this. And really, you just wind it in. And once it gets to a certain point, back it back all put a socket over it and then squish it all the way shut all right so once we got our windshield frame all in there snugged up got our little pivot arms and bushings all set where they go go over here to your to your machine there's two holes here from the factory this is where the 13 30 seconds drill bit comes in you're going to drill the outer section but not the intersection. These bolts have these little sleeves that keeps it from collapsing. You put the sleeve on all the way through. Uh, just a side note, this bottom bolt, the hole barely misses the tubing, so the tubing goes under. So you might have to file the hole just a little bit to get that little spacer to get past the tubing and then push out the sides. Once you get the outers drilled, put your bolts and your spacers in, and then you put in your little frame here that holds the windshield and also stacks up for the drive motor that flips the windshield up. So it goes like this, It'll slide on, and you'll have some spacers, and then the drive motor will slide on. All right, so once you set your windshield up here, uh, it'll be time to put your brackets on. The brackets get these little little steel bushings, uh, spacers. These bushing spacers go in these brass bushings, and it fits just like this. So you'll put this on the windshield on both sides. Sometimes it's good to have a helping hand. Put it on, and then slide the windshield up where it goes, lining up these bolt holes, and then push the bolts through then the motors will stack on top of this. All right, so once you have your windshield all mounted correctly and loosely, the windshield goes through the bushing, the spacer. You have two more spacers that go with the mounting bolts. Then you have your inner plate. So your inner plate won't mount just yet. I'm just showing how it goes. Uh, this is what holds the motor that pushes the windshield up and down. You can see it lines up with the holes and the teeth right there, and the teeth on the bottom. That's why you have the spacers. The spacers is what holds everything good and solid. But first, we'll go mount the motor to this little plate. So the motor, as I said, there's a left and right. The wire goes to the inside, not towards the cage. Basically, you have these plastic washers. They go on both sides of the motor then this slides over. You use these little pins. They have a little bit of knurling on them. You can put it in a vise or some channel locks. And basically, you'll be pushing and making your own little, little knurls through. And then 
the car key on the inside. So using a vise, or you can use channel locks and do the same thing. You're really just pushing your pin in just like that. All right, so once you got your motors mounted to the little plates, plates slide on, use the remaining nuts, tighten it up, get everything mounted how it should be. And then myself, I, I do all the wiring last, mostly because I wanna know where the wire's gonna go and so I can take up extra slack if there is any. So like I say, you take off your seat, take off these panels, and just reach behind them and pull on them into your front panel. Now instructions, they say you can put your switch here. Uh, we're gonna put it up here. So we run our wire forward. I drilled a hole through this little bit of plastic, run it up, and then run the wire out. The switch only goes on one way, so you could really just put this all back together like that. Run backwards, run zip tie, zip tie the harness to your current wire harness. Then you got your terminal block. You got negative, positive, and accessory positive. can says to go negative and accessory positive. And then you have your two feed wires left. On this four seater, you go out, and then you'll go out of the side of the console to the bottom of this frame reel. So this frame rail follow up. You go all the way up here and you'll go into the cage right here. And you'll come out of the cage right here using a piece of wire, you know, rather stiff wire, tape it to the end of the wires, feed it through backwards, tape it to your harness, and then gently pull it through while feeding the other side. So then you got positive one and positive two. Since they're both red, uh, you can put them into the plug to do a little test on forward and backward as far as the motor goes. And that way you get both of them tied correctly. But they're both going forward and they're both going out. Uh, in the instructions, it says to let the motors run all the way out on their own and then all the way in on their own just to basically cycle. Then you would pin them up to where they go. All right, so once you've run your wire down and out, like I say, test this to push your motor all the way out. And it turns out that positive two here goes to black. So that way you remember, take your plug, your plugs are gonna go on like this with the lock. So then you can pull them off, know which way your plug goes, line up your colors. So positive two will go this side that way it all lines up together. So these little plugs, um, they only go in one way, they're square. So it'll either fit in good or it'll like stop halfway. So if you watch, and you'll hear it click. Now once it's in, it's locked in. You can't get it back out unless you have a special tool that goes inside here, raises a tab and pulls it out. So that's why I say definitely kind of double and triple check to make sure you put the correct side to the correct side. Otherwise your switch will be backwards. So now that you have your finished product with your plug, go to your other plug. And now with your motor, the same way you did the upper side. There's a plastic washer on each side of the motor and then the pin goes through from inside out using channel locks and a socket, push it all together and use your little car key to lock it in. So after you button up all your wires, zip tie them all where they go, get them all nice and clean, make your plugs, zip tie all your harness down here, you can put it all back together, put your seat back in, and you've officially got a power flip windshield by Can-Am Accessories.